We live in very strange times. Uh, I could say that for myself on a personal level, this lockdown has been fine. Uh, I'm lucky. I live with my girlfriend. We're very much in love and it's awesome being able to spend so much more time together. Uh, from a work point of view, sure, I'm a bit worried about money, but not too much. Um, I'm doing, I'm a filmmaker, so sure, I don't go out shooting anymore, but everything else I was doing already, so the writing part, the editing, whatever, I can still do. So my routine hasn't changed that much. I still work in my house in front of my laptop most of the time. I'm doing different things. So I'm doing a, I'm preparing a screen act, an online screen acting course that I'll be launching pretty soon. I'm doing new YouTube videos. I'm also preparing a horror short movie with, with my girlfriend. And, and I'm doing a, an online singing course for myself because I want to learn how to sing. So that's fine, right? And yet it's not. It's not because I've, I've had a chance to really understand what the situation is like thanks to my girlfriend who used to work in a hospital. And as soon as this whole situation started, she set up a Facebook group to help and support the hospital. Uh, the, so the staff and the patients in the hospital. So we gather donations from people, you know, food, toiletries, pillows, uh, face shields, 3D printed face shields and anything that they might need. And we try and provide it as quickly as we can. And I'm proud to be part of that. I'm proud to have been handling some of this, this stuff. What that allowed us was this direct contact to the hospital allows us is a much further understanding of what what's going on. One thing I've noticed is that there's a huge detachment between the reality and the perception of reality for most people. Now, I know it sounds super douchey to say that, but you know, and this can, you can say it's true anytime and it is. But now it's much more so. I keep seeing my my social media uh, platforms flooded with conspiracy theories and also that people pissed off because they had to stay at home and uh, whatever. And of course, we're worried. We're worried about lots of stuff. We're worried about money and whatever. But the situation is so much worse than we think, especially here in the UK. I mean, just to put things into, pers into perspective, okay, today is the 24th of April. In the UK, we've had 143,000 cases confirmed. And let's remember, we're not testing that much. And 19,506 deaths. In Poland, they've only had 10,892 uh, confirmed cases and 494 deaths. Why? Because they went into a very serious lockdown right away. As soon as they saw how bad things were getting in Italy, they said, okay, we're locking everything. We're closing the country. Nobody gets out of their door. And it worked. It worked. It is working. Not only that, but they've been testing a lot and they managed to trace People. So in one town close to where my girlfriend lives, that's why I know this, they managed to trace, there were like 50 cases, um, and they managed to trace that to one guy. One guy who was perfectly healthy, uh, flew a thing from Italy, and he just went around with his normal life, and he didn't have any symptoms. He just went on his normal day-to-day -day activities, and he infected 50 people. Our government here spent 11 days telling bullshit about herd immunity. How many people did we get? How many deaths are we getting because of those 11 days? And I know that, you know, we're all worried about our own freedom and what will happen if we get used to getting told what to do to the point of, you know, you have to stay at home. We're worried about 5G tracking, whatever. But guys, people are dying. And of course, we should be worried about democracy. We should be worried about our rights. Absolutely. We need to keep an eye out for that. 
but this is serious. It's not a conspiracy, it's not some kind of crazy stuff or whatever stupid conspiracy theory come, goes around nowadays. It's happening, it's true. Sure, it's an inconvenience that you have to be stuck at home and it's such a nice weather. Sure, it's an inconvenience that uh, you can't go to work and you're worried about uh, how to pay your rent. It's more than an inconvenience, it's a real problem if you don't know how to pay your rent. But there are helps, There are the government is a little bit trying to do certain things, finally. I've got a friend who is an amazing uh, person, she used to work, uh, she's a friend of my girlfriend's, she used to work in the hospital and uh, she was a carer, she used to, not a nurse, I don't remember the term, sort of below a nurse, she was practically washing people, patients, taking care of you know their basis needs and she got COVID and ever, since she started developing symptoms it took I think three days and she was in the ICU attached to a ventilator. She was put in a, a, an induced coma and she has not woken up yet. This was two weeks ago. We don't know if she'll make it. She's not old, she's 37. Uh, she didn't have any previous conditions, she didn't have anything. This is serious. It really is serious. And I know that most of us don't feel it because we're just in our own homes, we're bored, we're thinking, oh, what's on Netflix today or whatever. It is serious, guys. It's very serious. And we should take it seriously. So, sorry I got a bit political there, but it is really frustrating and is really scary. So, I hope we'll learn from this. And I hope those who made mistakes were on top in the government or... World Health Organization as well or whatever, those who made mistakes, those who made bad choices that are costing lives, I hope they will be kept um, accountable for this and I hope most importantly we will learn something from this experience because it would be too bad if we didn't. It is costing us so much, it costs people everything already, we have to learn from this. Thank you.